since clinical development is often performed in large academic medical centers, but not exclusively and not out of any structural necessity. Rather, discovery is the component of pharma most aligned with the episteme of academia and most in need of help. Now, what if these were to merge? My modest proposal is quite simply that pharma turn over its discovery function, lock, stock, and barrel, to a new set of nonprofit research centers associated with major universities. These new entities would form a network of institutes with the goal of exploring biology for therapeutic opportunities and carrying these through to a point suitable for industry uptake. The overlap among pharma pipelines would disappear. Collusion would be the norm instead of illegal. The centers would be staffed by university-affiliated faculty interested in biomedicine and by veteran of pharma with many skills needed for real-world drug discovery through preclinical stages. Students would provide an additional spark. The atmosphere would be intermediate, perhaps biotech-like, but without the venture capital. Some faculty might still opt for startups and the promise of big personal gains, and pharma could still buy their wares. But for the risk-averse and the altruists, these institutes would provide a secure and powerful economic base closely allied with basic research. One must hope that scientific ideals prove as effective as the profit motive and that the need for more science-driven innovation trumps raw market efficiency. Industry consortia, by comparison, are half measures. The most radical example I know of was MCC in the 1980s, in which dozens of computer and electronics firms bought memberships and seconded staff to do joint R&D. Special laws waived constraints on anti-competitive behavior, and a complex scheme provided for 17 kinds of technology transfer to member companies. Academic involvement was minor, amounting to a few grants. MCC eventually faded, in part due to half-hearted industry commitment, and a cumbersome transition to competition. However, I'm not suggesting that pharma join a consor consortium, but rather just take current trends to their logical conclusion by divesting discovery. Moreover, academia has to be heavily engaged to foster the element of science-driven innovation. As for funding, pharma might sponsor directed research, perhaps with rights of first refusal, but a simpler model would be for them to buy the rights to scarce drug candidates at auction, much the way the electromagnetic spectrum is allocated today. And then, <coughs> then they would compete on what they do best and most uniquely, development and commercialization. This proposed intermediary institution might be seen as just rearranging the deck chairs, and indeed it couldn't possibly fix every ill. But it spans a problematic boundary between academia and industry, and so has the potential to catalyze the movement of episteme to techne. Granted, it may still depend on intellectual property as a currency of exchange, so as to finance itself and also recompense academia in some way. Could one contemplate putting everything in the public domain, making a true commons? This would put to rest the question of who owns science, but it leaves pharma with little incentive to invest in <coughs> development. Perhaps patent law, which has been fiddled many times for pharma, could be altered to afford relief without the pretense of promoting innovation. In any case, by clarifying the roles of academia and industry, I suggest that this scheme would make it easier to consider reforms in the common interest of scientific ideals, the economy, and the health of the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Very timely and fascinating. Now, the way we're going to do it, which I should have said in the beginning, is that each speaker will get to speak for 25 minutes, and then we have five minutes of specific questions. Uh, bear in mind, we're going to have more general discussion at the end. So does anybody have a specific point they'd like to raise now? Yes, please. David, can you put back the last slide you had on for a second? The, 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 my question is, why, why do you need this new entity? Why don't you just switch the blocks? Why don't you put the discovery back into the universities or academia and put the directed research into industry? Switch them completely. Yeah, I mean, the directed research is, the, is sort of the last step uh, in, the, in your proposal. It's the last step uh, of academic research, which you think is sort of co colludes or uh, causes a problem with, with basic research. So why don't you just give it over to industry 
and industry basically gives over the discovery phase back into academia. Why do you need this middle part? Why do you need to make a new construction? Well, Why don't you just switch the two entities? I, I think you would get the order uh, reversed then. If directed research uh, results from basic research but then leads to discovery in the, acad in the uh, industrial sense and then on through the industrial pipeline, then switching them, I think you'd be going back and forth, wouldn't you? But the question, the, the, the question really is whether uh, with the discovery, uh, in the sense of uh, or the way they describe it in uh, in the industrial setting, um, if that's really a real discovery, because discovery actually is, is done in academic research, and then what, what, in, what in reality industrial research then does it then takes those discoveries and does more direct directed research on it to actually take it further to commercialization. Well, uh, part of what's behind this, I think, is an incentive to, to industry, because. Uh, I think right now R&D, at least the R part of R&D in industry, is dying death by a thousand cuts. And so uh, what this would do is it would offer industry an alternative uh, that would be less value destroying uh, and, as I say, could give them uh, an immediate incentive of something like a tax break if these were nonprofit charitable institutions. So. Uh, right now, I think we're, we're in a potential energy well. It's going to be very difficult to break out of uh, this, this local minimum, in a sense. So there's got to be some kind of incentive uh, on both sides, I think, in order to, to make something happen that would, would bring these together. So part of what I'm thinking of is, is motivational. I think, I think you might hold this thought, actually, uh, and see if it, how it relates to other things, unless you have one final tweet. The, 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 the question, the one final question that I have is, um, it's it's not only it's not only the industry because it's also uh, scientific conduct and the way that science is actually done. Because if you look at uh, uh, scientific papers nowadays, uh, while ten or twenty years ago it was fine to actually tar uh, to publish on targets, um, nowadays if you do want to publish in Nature, Soil, and Science, you need to go further than that as an academic researcher, and you need to actually have a p uh, potential lead compounds or actually have some sort of assay so they can actually go further. Um, so in a way. Um, Basic research is already progressing further than just doing the discovery phase. They're doing a bit of application, but that is not only coming because of industry, but it's also coming because of the whole environment, and it is also something that is expected of them. So I think this is very nice, and as you said, it's just one, one part, and I think there, there are a lot, of par a lot of parts within the basic research environment and, and the whole concept, uh, which are perhaps not in the right place. Mm. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? Yes. One last one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the talk. Amazing. Uh, the, the question is uh, about uh, what would happen if everyone agreed that this is rational and even if there are incentives in the system, uh, do you think that the two world or the two institutions have enough agility, flexibility or will to change in their veins for this to happen? Well, I spoke uh, just a moment ago about providing an incentive to, uh, to industry. And there's nothing like a short-term incentive to get industry excited. And having the, the short-term incentive of a tax break, I think, is, is, is something that, that might be intriguing. Um, I think uh, the, the, the biggest hurdle uh, is cultural. Uh, but my own experience is that the directed research in academia and the discovery end, the, the very proximal end of the pipeline in, in industry, uh, are the, have the least cultural hurdles to overcome. I mean, the scientists in industry are scientists, and, and they have uh, most of the same ideals, all of the same ideals, I think, of university scientists, uh, but they're in a different context. So I think this would actually be the easiest sort of transition to make, uh, or the, the combination to make, pulling the, uh, the ends, if you will, of the, of the two pipelines together. Uh, rather than trying to do something that uh, is more of a side-to-side uh, -side transfer.